Frank Miller. Can you think of any comic book creator who has hit such highs and such lows, at least critically? I mean, in the 80s, he was unbeatable with stuff like Daredevil Born Again, uh, Dark Knight Returns, so many great runs. He defined Daredevil. He redefined Batman. And then in the 90s, still strong. Sin City, Martha Washington, some great stuff through Dark Horse. Then all of a sudden, 9-11 happens? Frank Miller got a little weird. We're going to take a look at the tropes of Frank Miller today. And as I come across each one, I'm going to take a shot of moonshine. I figure that's just crazy enough that it'll work. Let's get going. Here's a few of the tropes you could expect to find in any given Frank Miller comic book. Prostitute heroes. Postmodern panel layout. Superheroes making love to one another. Tough guy monologues. Characters being willing to die as long as they are free or accomplish their task. Nazis. Antagonists that have grotesque deformities. Ninjas or Japanese pop culture. Islamophobia. Muggings. People without superpowers accomplishing superhuman feats. One honest cop, lawyer, or politician surrounded by corruption. Castration, beheading, or other limbs being removed from a body. Narration or dialogue commenting on how incredible a fight is. Alright, let's head to the comic book store, find a Frank Miller issue, and get going. I'm here at the Comics Dungeon in Seattle, Washington. It's a fantastic shop for vintage back issues. They have one of the best appraisers in the whole Pacific Northwest. I'm sure we can find something really cool here. Comics Dungeon is a nice place. I picked up an issue of Sin City, the big fat kill. So you know what? Let's get this color appropriate. Much better. All right, let's read this issue and see how many tropes we can find and how much moonshine I'm going to be drinking. The issue begins with Shelly, a really nice prostitute, being harassed by somebody named Jackie Boy on the other side of her apartment door. I think that right off the bat, we can say that Shelly and the other prostitutes who we're about to meet here are the protagonists, along with a guy named Dwight, so I'm drinking right on the first page. First moonshine I got is uh, apple pie flavored. Woo! It just smells like jet fuel. It's strong, but you know what? It has a good apple taste. I'm going to drink some more. Why not? Strong, but tasty, too. Brewed and bottled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. <coughs> that cough is real. All right, let's keep reading. Our protagonist, Dwight, is, uh, I guess, Shelly's sometime boyfriend, and uh, he's over there, but Shelly says she wants to talk to this Jackie boy and his friends, so Dwight goes and hides in the bathroom. Predictably, Jackie boy and his friends are a bit abusive. In fact... Yeah, eventually Jackie Boy loses his temper and uh, throws Shelly into the counter, hurting her. But it's worth noting, just before he hurts her, Jackie Boy starts repeating himself. And Frank Miller would often do this in his sort of tough guy monologue talk, uh, when he's sort of trying to write noir-esque dialogue, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just a trope. Uh, he'd sort of repeat himself, and here's Jackie Boy saying that he suspects there's another man there. He's saying, where is he? Where is he? Next moonshine is lemonade. I like lemonade it's a lot. Does not smell like lemonade. Ooh, kind of tastes like lemonade. It's just really, really strong. These are very sweet. I can sort of see why they're popular. Jackie Boy decides to go take a leak in the bathroom while his uh, boys hold Shelly at hostage. Uh, little does he know that Dwight is hiding in the shower. Dwight instantly holds a razor blade to Jackie's eye and then dunks his head in the toilet. This is uh, pretty extreme, over-the-top stuff. Doesn't necessarily quite hit any of the tropes that I listed, but it's, uh, it's the kind of tough guy, over-the-top violence you could expect to find in most of Frank Miller's stories. After that, Jackie and his friends decide to leave, but 
Dwight tells Shelley that he's worried that they might cause some trouble, so he's going to go follow after them. He jumps down from something like a third-story balcony in this splash page. I guess he can just do stuff like that. Wait a minute, now that I think of it, that's... That's pretty casually superhuman. People do not just jump from a third-story balcony down to the ground. So, yeah, that's a normal person doing something superhuman. Was about to miss that one. I get some moonshine. Peach. Mmm. Ooh. It is peach. It's strong, but it's peach. I like it. Maybe not as much as the others. The apple pie might have been the best. It's not that it's that much stronger than the average wine, but it tastes different. You can really taste the alcohol in it. It just tastes like gasoline and sugar. All right, so starting now, we start hearing Dwight's tough guy monologues. Yes, it's a trope. Let's read it for a second. He's a uh, tailing Jackie boy, and this is just part of his dialogue. Speeding. It's a good way to get yourself noticed. And if you're a murderer with a new face who's one fingerprint check away from the fast track to the gas chamber like I am, the last thing you want is to get noticed. It's a chance I shouldn't be taking, but I can't just go home and forget about it and let Jackie Boy and his pals have their fun. They're a pack of predators, and they're out for blood tonight. A woman's blood. <laughs> it's, uh... It, I, I think the point is to be kind of laughably over the top, so uh, it's fun. Strawberry. I don't know if it really can be called moonshine. Wasn't moonshine sort of like illegal distilleries out in the boonies? I, this is obviously not illegal, but anyway, they call it moonshine, so. It's good. Um, probably tastes the least like the thing it says. Tastes more just fruity. I don't get a lot of strawberry flavor out of it. It tastes good, but it's almost more like a fruit punch than, than, than just strawberry. So Jackie and his friends are heading for a place called Old Town. That's in Sin City's world, this place that the prostitutes pretty much control. They're still prostitutes, but the cops don't go there, and they police it themselves, and they kill anyone that steps out of line. It's a dangerous, dangerous place. And pretty much what you could expect to happen, happens. Uh, the drunken Jackie and his friends start hitting on a girl that's on the street that says she's off the clock. They basically won't take no for an answer. And the whole time they're being watched by not just Dwight, but Miho. Uh, she's sort of this Japanese ninja assassin prostitute. So that sort of combines the prostitute hero and Frank Miller's love of all things Japan. I mean, he introduced ninjas to Daredevil. He created, like, Big Guy and Rusty the Robot, which is full of all sorts of Japanese robot ideas. Uh, he just loved that stuff. <laughs> as much as he gets pretty creepy about his Islamophobia post 9-11, he absolutely adores Japan. Anyway, that means some more apple pie moonshine for me. Sorry, I could only find four, so I'm just gonna keep drinking one that I've already had. The one I like the most. I've been drinking, so I will not go driving anytime soon. Instead, I'll play some Pokemon Go. And I'll just walk around the neighborhood drunkenly. It's good. I've been reading some Sin City comics and yeah, I've, I've done a number on this. What else about Sin City? What else? I think one thing you could do... Oh! I gotta clean that up. The episode ends with Gail, Dwight's old girlfriend and the leader of the prostitutes, pulling Dwight aside and saying, let Miho handle this. It's really obvious that Jackie Boy is about to die and this is gonna set up a conflict between the police and the prostitutes. That element of the police not going into old time, old time, and that truce is going to be broken in the in this uh, series. Uh, so the big fat kill, kind of fun issue. Uh, it's over the top. It's not as ugly as some of his later work. I used to adore Frank Miller. 
His art was pretty cool. I would never say it was the best, but he, he was fairly clean, good storytelling. Uh, you know, definitely in these early days when he's doing Daredevil, great stuff. And as a writer, he brought so much to Daredevil. The Catholicism, the Hand, uh, Electra, tons of fascinating elements, great villains. He elevated the Kingpin to his adversary. He did great stuff like Ronin. Of course, everybody knows about Dark Knight Returns. Pretty seminal Batman work, but his uh, Batman Year One is just as influential, maybe even more so. I mean, Batman Begins, that movie is very, very heavily based on Batman Year One by Frank Miller. He wrote some great stuff. I, I don't know exactly when he seemed to sort of lose his mind, but his work on stuff like All-Star Batman and Robin is pretty weird. There's a book called Holy Terror, where this superhero goes around just beating up Al-Qaeda people, actually just sort of brutalizing them in such a way that it just gets ugly and mean-spirited. Uh, I don't know, you know, he's earned the ability to do what he wants. I prefer Frank Miller up through about the mid to late 90s. After that, I just sort of say, not for me. Maybe it's for you. Your mileage may vary. So does it feel like I'm picking on Frank Miller? I'm really not trying to. I was a big fan. How big a fan? I bought some original art by Frank Miller. Uh, you may recall my portfolio book of original art. And, uh... Yeah. There we go. Here's a uh, sketch of Batman by Frank Miller. Maybe not the most elaborate thing, but Frank Miller art is not cheap. Oh, I got an idea. I'll, um, let's watch the Sin City movie, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make better dialogue for it. That's what I, let's do it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, you took my knives to put my... Listen, we need them knives, and, uh, I'm gonna do this over you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the men's room now, and, uh... Yeah, well, you ain't getting my sandwiches. They're they still mine. They're in the fridge. Yeah, well, I do like sandwiches. Yeah, I like sandwiches. I'm gonna pee. Yo, he may think that uh, he doesn't want a sandwich, but we all want sandwiches, all right? So we're gonna go in the fridge and taste. You take my sandwich and you get cut, man. Ooh. Mm, pissing. Hey, listen, I run a new barber service. I um, I'm looking for clients. I I'm looking to cut hair. You uh, need you need a haircut? I uh, do a pretty good job, and uh, I'm looking to cut somebody's hair. And like, listen, I don't need a haircut. Uh, I don't know who told you, but. I think you do need a haircut. I'm I've got this razor ready and let's let's do this thing. No! <laughs> My ring. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't flush. It's funnier this way. And I thought to myself, if he doesn't get a haircut by me, he doesn't get a haircut by anybody. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I put out these videos at least once a week, so please consider subscribing. I've got a lot more content that I think you'll like.